Welcome back to Vogar the Viking, and things are about to get really hot up in here. Holy smokes, is it hot up in here. Welcome to the foot of the volcano. And uh, as you can probably tell right now, it's, everything's fire themed. Fireballs, fire flingers. Also fire snakes, they spit fire when you get near them, so it's best to jump on them rather than attack them head on. And then there's this guy. That's Beefcake. Beefcake's not that smart. Also, the slimes get an upgrade. They're now hot sauce. So the hot sauces, whenever they jump, they leave behind a little flame, and that does hurt you. You just have to wait out for the flame to dissipate, and it's all good. And one thing that this level has in spades is precision platforming. Not just precision platforming, but precision platforming around fireballs. Lots of them. At least they have, like, really decorative, uh, patterns. So yeah, as you can probably tell, the enemies are not really the big obstacle in this level. It's more of the constant threat of fire being everywhere. So this next part is pretty tricky, because there's no platforms here. Well, okay, there's one platform. And it's mostly climbing ropes. And one thing that I should have mentioned in the first update is that you should never climb to the very top of a rope and try to jump from there. Because you're going to knock your head on the top, and you're going to end up uh, losing a lot of distance. And you're probably just going to end up killing yourself that way. What you always should do is give yourself a little bit of uh, headroom. I should say. Give yourself some headroom so that way you can get the maximum amount of jump that you need to get. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah, you gotta really watch out where you're rolling and stuff, otherwise you're gonna end up in the fire. So this next part breaks off into two areas. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way you choose. It just depends on which enemies you would rather fight. So I'm going to go with the top route because the enemies are easier to deal with than hot sauce. So one neat thing about the exploding bat things is not only that they can hurt you, they can also kill enemies. And here's our last new enemy of the level. And that's the cult leader. Cult leaders throw fireballs. Also, if you get really close to them, they'll try to bite you. And they go down in three hits. Thank <laughs> you. 
Instead of killing that exploding bat, you could have used him to kill that cult leader down below if you just stand a little close to him. You know, funny thing now that I'm thinking about it, this is the one level in the entire game that doesn't follow the color-coded theme that is scattered throughout the entire game. And uh, I find that a little surprising because uh, all these enemies are either gray or green. I mean, it makes sense because it's a snake cult worshipping dudes. So it kind of makes sense for them to be greenish and red. No blue. Blue for... no blue snakes out there. At the end of the slide, we're gonna roll off so that way we can end up right here. And that is the end of the level, and it's time for the boss. So Fluffy might look intimidating, but he's really pretty simple, because he only has two moves. The first one being that lunge attack there. And then his second attack, he'll knock his head up against the ceiling and cause stalactites to fall onto the ground. Anyways, the best way to avoid that lunge attack is to not look for his head. Actually, what you're going to do is look at his rattle. Uh, every time he's about to do his lunge attack, the rattle will shake rapidly, and that's your signal to start moving. And once he lunges down, you turn around and start whacking him a couple of times. And for the stalactite attack, all you have to do is stay on the right side of the screen and it will never touch you at all. Eventually he's going to start dropping hot sauce onto the ground. And uh, all you have to do is just take a few seconds and kill them real fast. If there's two of them, then take out the first one that's closest to you. And if the second one is jumping towards you, take that one out too. But if it's jumping the other way, don't worry about it. And just keep repeating what I'm doing right here, and you're pretty much golden here. And he's down. And that's one way of killing him, but it's kind of slow. And, uh, it's kind of boring, so why don't I show you a faster way of killing him? And it's also more exciting. Alright, as soon as you drop into the arena, turn around and start throwing spears into the wall. You're gonna want it about the same height as his head, and then as soon as he lunges at you, jump up and do a spin attack, and then immediately hold down to get another attack in, and since he knocked his head up against the wall, a stalactite will fall, counting as another hit. You can also charge up spears and throw it at his face, which counts as another couple of hits. So, uh, you're, you're really maximizing your damage output here. You could probably get in more spears than I am, if you're faster than I am. And that's it! He's down in what? Less than a minute? And that is the end of this video. I hope to catch you next time. See ya! Yeah.